Today we've got a $1,132 build, somewhere around that price point. So we're gonna get into the parts guide, the build montage, which you guys wanna stay for, hopefully, because I'm gonna be spending a long time on that, and then the benchmarks, of course. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel. We discuss PC patch reviews, guides, mods, and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. So some of the parts that we have here, you already are well aware of and that I've used in previous builds, but I'll be going over them briefly just to describe why I would put them in this $1,000 build. Anyways, the first thing is the Ryzen 1700, which everyone is already very well acquainted with. We all know what it's capable of. And you can find these for around $190 to $170 or even $60, depending on whether it's on sale or not. And to complement our Ryzen 1700, we have 16 gigs of DDR4, 3000 megahertz RAM from G-Skill. And that is the Rip Jaws 5 RAM. So this RAM works pretty well with the Ryzen first gen in terms of compatibility. And the speed of 3000 megahertz works well with Ryzen since it prefers faster memory. You can find these kits for around $100 to $110. It's pretty standard. I've used this in a couple builds already. I really like this RAM for the price that it's offered at. For our GPU, we've got the GTX 1070 from MSI, the Gaming X. And this one in particular is like $450, which is way overpriced for a 1070 right now. A lot of them are on sale for around $130 to like $380. So beneath that $400 price mark. So that's where I'll be gauging the 1070. The MSI Gaming X is a good card. If you want to spend the extra money on it, go ahead. But I would highly recommend just getting one of the $360 models, one of the cheaper ones that are on sale. The motherboard that we'll be using is from Biostar, and this is a B450 board. This is the B450 GT3, the racing motherboard. This is a micro ATX board. So um, micro ATX will give you the flexibility of whether or not if you want to downscale your build in the future without changing your motherboard, you have that. Now, I did do a review of the B360 board from Biostar, which is pretty much the same board, but in an ATX form factor. That was $100, but this one is at an MSRP of $135, which is a little expensive in my opinion. That's crossing into the X470 territory, but I'm sure you'll be able to find something like this on sale for like $100 or $110, which would make this a much more competitive price. But aside from the price, you do have a pretty nice feature set with this board. A pretty solid VRM with some decent MOSFETs actually and also support up to 3,200 megahertz for your RAM. Also, you have a dual BIOS and two RGB headers in case you need two separate connectors on different sides of the board or something like that. There are B450 boards that are at that $140 price mark, but there are some X470 boards as well. So just keep that in mind. A little bit cheaper would have me really, really advocating this board. So take it or leave it for what it is. I particularly like it, but uh, I can understand if the $135 price mark is too much for you. Now we got some new offerings from Cooler Master. First off, we're going to start with the new Hyper 212 coolers. Yes, no longer are we stuck with the Hyper 212 Evo. We now have the Hyper 212 Black Edition and RGB Edition. I really, really do like that Cooler Master is catering to both crowds, RGB and non-RGB. We'll be using the RGB cooler for this build, but the price difference between these two is $35 for the black and $40 for the RGB. So I'm really glad that the $5 difference is all that it takes to get to the RGB one because sometimes there's a price premium of like 15 to 20 bucks for some products that have added on RGB. And we also got a new power supply from Cooler Master, the MWE Gold, the 650 watt fully modular 80 plus gold certified power supply. Obviously it's 80 plus gold, but it also has a five year warranty and it's being offered at $90 MSRP. Now this is going to provide an alternative to EVGA, Corsair, Seasonic, all those guys. This has added in durability and sustainability from their previous model from 2017, which is also pretty well received. There are no reviews of this yet, so I couldn't get into detail what's different about this one, but there are differences within uh, some like the 12 volt rails and some of the capacitors inside that will have better sustainability and durability for high peak loads so i think it's important investing good money into your power supply that's going to be supplying the power to your pc i think that's important and i think 650 watts is the perfect amount for ryzen 1700 and gtx 1070 in my opinion next we've got the masterbox k500 which is a 75 dollars case with three fans two of which are rgb i think the one in the back is not rgb i can't really tell but three fans at 75 bucks is a sweet deal You've also got tempered glass, of course, and you've got mesh airflow coming in from the top 
and from the front which is really nice to see but for 75 bucks i think this is going to be a pretty well and complete case and we also got a 24 pin angle connector from cooler master i'm not including this into the overall price of the build i think it's just pretty nice that you've got a 90 degree angle connector to make it easier to install your 24 pin cable and lastly we've got a samsung ssd over here now this is an older ssd what i will be recommending and putting down in the description is the 860 evo more importantly the 500 gigabyte version which is $72 at this point in time of making this video. And lastly, you can get a two terabyte drive from either Western Digital or Seagate for around 60 bucks. Um, you can find them on sale for cheaper sometimes, but for mass storage, I think that'll be perfectly fine for 60 bucks and concludes the total price to $1,132. So for that, I think we have a pretty solid build here. So let's get into the montage, which I'm going to try to make it as beautiful as possible. And then we'll get into the benchmarks. So let's get into it. Yeah. 